Welcome to this video guys. It's gonna be a little long. I promise you though, it's gonna be worth it. Every single minute that you watch is going to be worth it because we are going to cover the entire Duolingo speaking module. What are we gonna cover? Number one, the test format. Number two, the tips and tricks to ace this test in terms of the speaking part portion of it at least. And finally, we're gonna be showing you some questions right here. So the questions are present right over here in this folder. We have some of these question types. Let, let me actually show you over here. There's a couple of these and we're gonna go over all of these questions right over here. I'm gonna be solving them right in front of you and you're gonna see exactly how you can score 150 plus on this section of the Duolingo test. Again, please understand that I have not memorized the script. I have not seen these questions before. I've just randomly gotten all of these questions from the Duolingo website or from Duolingo questions and basically I've put them in this folder so that you can see exactly what it takes to score 150 plus right in front of you. If I stutter, I stutter. If I miss out on something or if basically timer goes goes out and I'm still speaking, well, you still will see exactly all that happen. I want to give you this overview because it is the most important part of the testing experience and I want to be as realistic with you as possible. Now, before we move on, make sure to download the YMGrad application, which is available on both the Google Play Store and the App Store for iOS. Again, once you download this application and you sign up, you confirm your email, you will have the next steps on how you can receive all these questions. And I'm gonna be adding a couple of more questions as well. So you will basically be able to get all of those directly delivered to your email so that you can start practicing right here. In this video also, I'll give you some practice. So hopefully that should add on. And in general, this all of this stuff is free. So you should be able to definitely take out value from this content. Now, without any fluff, let's just begin. And let me actually tell you about the questions Question types. Why do we need to understand the question types? It's very simple. Without understanding them, you won't be able to practice them. You see, there's not a lot of good resources out there to practice Duolingo test from. And yes, while the website will make it a little bit easier for you, they'll give you unlimited practice, but the same questions start repeating. And every time if you're doing the same questions, well, you're not doing a lot of practice, are you? So that's why I'm trying to add as many practice questions for the speaking section, at least in this video, the other sections will be coming on soon. And then I'll build you a full fledged prep plan as well. All of it for free on this YouTube channel itself. So make sure you hit the subscribe button. Now the question types. The first one is read a sentence aloud. You see a question, something like this. Let me actually show you over here on my screen. Read a sentence aloud. You will see something like this on your screen. Let me actually pull it on this monitor. And you will see it's right over here. You have to just speak the sentence. That is it. It's as simple as that. However, the sentences can get technical and complicated and long in some cases, but it's probably the simplest speaking question type that you will encounter. You usually have about 20 seconds to answer this question. You just read the text and you answer it. The things over here that you have to understand, I'll go over them in a bit once we cover this question in detail and give you the samples as well. The second question type over here is the description of a picture. You have to describe whatever is in front of you. And usually you will have a 60 to 90 second answer time for such questions. Let me actually show you a sample of this question as well. There's one that I took from the Duolingo website over here, right? You have to describe this picture again, how you do that, what you have to do, what you don't have to do. All of this is covered later on. And then there's the independent speaking question types, the most important ones over here. And these are really the toughest ones that Duolingo is going to be testing you on. So these can happen in basically two variants. The first one is the written prompt. You will get a prompt in front of you, but you that will have a couple of questions and then you'll have to answer all of those questions in general. This will usually give you a 90 second answer time where you have a 20 to 30 second preparation time as well. And you will have to speak for a minimum of 30 seconds. And I would highly advise that you do more than that. But again, let's cover all of that later on. Let me actually show you some questions like that. And you can actually see right here, um, I have this right in front of your screen, right? And you can see the exact question and what kind of a question you can expect. Again, going over this in a bit in front of you in the video. And the final question type will be the same independent speaking module. The only difference is, is that the question type will be in an oral format. That means it will be an audio based prompt. They will tell you the questions in audio and you will have to answer them again in a very similar form. Now let's actually move on to the question types one by one and I'll cover those for you, give you live examples and show you exactly how things have to go. And I'll also give you some tips and tricks. So for read a sentence aloud, this is exactly the kind of question that you will come across in mostly the beginning phases of the test. It's a very simple variant. As you can see over here, I'll just put a question in front of your screen. And really, as you can see, it's a very simple variant of this question. There's really not 
um, a lot that you have to do over here, but the common mistakes that people do over here. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on the basis of that. So number one is that do not alter the question. Do not alter this line that you have to speak. Don't change it. Don't try to make it better. Don't try to alter it. Speak it as you see it right over here. You don't really have to alter it in any manner. If you're doing that, if you're modifying something, if you're appending something, if you're removing something, that's basically your cue to lose the points. And that's what we are avoiding over here. The next thing is to avoid the filler words as much as possible. You have to simply read the sentence. Don't say things like, um, uh, or, you know, or anything of the sort that, you know, you wanna, you probably wanna make it look a little bit more realistic, but no, don't do that. As much as possible, avoid these words. And I think I'll be putting this point in my further pointers as well, tips and tricks for other question types as well. This is an absolute killer of your score and you need to avoid it as much as possible. The third thing is to use intonation. Intonation is basically cadences in your voice or basically, you know, the way you speak the sentences, you know, or the way you frame your questions, it has to be a little bit up and down and, you know, if you can see me speak right now, you see that I just took it really high when I said, if you can see me speak right now, right? So, you know, these cadences, these are the ones which are intonation and you have to master them. You, you can really learn them from a native speaker if you watch a lot of videos online or what you can do is you can try to practice intonation from some YouTube videos. I think there's a lot of them already out there. I don't need to make one. However, it's certainly something that you would be scored on and I highly recommend working on it. Finally, point number four is to avoid speaking too fast. If you're going too fast just to beat the timer, trust me, there are no extra points to finishing early, right? So try to be on your normal pace. Trust me, the Duolingo test is really, really simple as compared to the TOEFL and ALS in general and you will have plenty of time to work through the questions. However, you do need to maintain a decent pace, but don't go too fast as well, just to beat the timer. And finally, point number five is to practice, practice, practice. I'll show you where you can practice this question. We'll do a couple of these together right here. I won't be turning on the timer for this one because again, it's probably not necessary. Um, I'll, I've still kept it over here just in case. However, you can see me do the first three questions right here. So let's go over the first image. And the answer to this would be, yes, I am going to eat. You see, I didn't say, yes, I'm going to eat. However, I said, yes, I am going to eat. You see, you have to be exactly in the same synchronization as the question on text. You don't have to change I to I'm, right? Or I am to I am, right? All these things or you know, I do not to I don't. All these things will basically reduce your points. You have to be as realistic as possible with this one and you simply have to read off of the screen. It's literally that simple. Let's see the next question over here. Again, it's a very simple one and says, do you like my car? Yes or no? You see, I put a little bit of intonation over here towards the end, and you can see that it's a very simple sentence. All you needed to do was say it as it's written. The third one over here, my dad does not eat fish. It's as simple as that. Let's actually take up, you know, uh, let's say college essays. I think I wanna show you a little bit of a complex example. So college essays, samples, or, you know, something like that. And uh, let me actually, come across this website. I actually went over this this evening also and I, I saw a couple of good sentences over here that I wanna uh, go over. So let's just, um, let's just take, you know, let's say this one over here. And you know, this is exactly how you'll practice this question. So you can just pick up random sentences from any website and you can start reading. Volunteering at a cancer treatment center has helped me discover my path, right? It's as simple as that. Then you can actually also pick out other sentences. Let me just um, do a couple more over here. Um, let me see right here. This seems like a little bit longer, a little bit more complex, right? So let's do this one. Dementia slowly fed on her memories until she became as blank as a brand new notebook. Again, you can see I spoke slowly, did have intonation over here, and it, it was pretty simple over here. Um, let me actually pick, up, pick out one last sentence over here. Let's see. So I'm gonna do this one over here. It seems pretty great to me as a last answer, and let's do this. As her bony hands shredded the green lips, a look of determination grew on her face. Again, you see, I did not stutter, did not say, oh, um, and it was really, really simple and to the point, right? That's all you have to do, trust me, the Duolingo can be as simple as that. However, it's gonna get a little bit more complex going forward. So let's move on to the tips and tricks for the next question type over here, and that is the picture description task. My first point for you would be to prepare before you speak. Take five, seven, eight seconds if you need, 
to speak, you know, as a maximum take 10 seconds, but don't take more than that. Trust me, it's gonna hurt your score. But the minimum, the better, of course, try to do it in five seconds. Really prepare before you speak, build a mind map, understand what you have to speak about the image. And let me actually give you a structure over here that has worked well for me and a lot of people that I have worked with. You start with the foreground. That is the most important part of the picture, of course. You start with the foreground and then you move on to the background of the image. And of course, then you also make some hypotheses over here. Basically, those are assumptions based on your understanding of what's going on in the image. Trust me, it won't hurt your score, but really what you don't want to do is just label the image. That brings me to my third point. Again, like I mentioned in the previous part also, do not use filler words. Don't say, oh, um, just take a pause if you have to. It's completely okay. Avoid these as much as possible because these will hurt your score more than a pause. Point number four over here is to avoid labeling the image. What does labeling the image mean? Let me actually give you an example over here. So for this image, if you say something like, there is a young girl, there is a doll in the image, there is a quilt, there is a bed. If you say something like this, you know, if you're telling things and you know, you can, you can have different sentence formations basically, but if you're basically just describing the image by telling what's included in it, trust me, you are setting yourself up for failure. You want more than that, okay? Like I said, go from the foreground to the background to really capturing the emotions and really understanding what's going on over here. You know, hypothesize that, oh, she looks happy, you know, something like that. We'll actually go over here and do the example in a bit, but I just wanted you to understand exactly what is going on on the screen over here and what you need to score well on this section. Point number five is to focus on your grammar, your vocabulary, and the substance of whatever you are speaking. It shouldn't be, you know, lacking substance. It should have the proper grammar. You shouldn't be, uh, you know, using sentences that without grammar over here. And you should try to use a little bit of advanced vocabulary and at least transition words. Transition words like however, or yet, or you know, something like furthermore, you know, all these things will help your score. It will help show off your English skills to the person who is going to be reviewing this. And of course, the more you can do that, the better it is. Of course, not to mention that in the entire speaking section, if you can have a little bit of a native speaker accent, that would of course improve your score even further. So without further ado, now I'm gonna do all of these questions live for you. There are three questions. What I want you to do over here is before I actually do these questions, go ahead, start your own timer, pause the video, and this is the question, and you can literally just go ahead and, well, practice, right? First you answer this, and then you can compare it with my answer. Hopefully that will help you in some way. So I'm hoping that you have finished at this point, and I'm going to begin with my answer. I'm starting the one minute timer, and then I'm gonna go straight into the plot. Okay, so observe carefully. The photo over here features a little blonde girl who is in her bed right now, and she is all tucked in and it seems like she is ready to go to sleep. Now, the girl actually has a doll lying next to her, both of them looking very, very similar with the blonde hair on both of them and the white clothing both of them are wearing. It seems like they are almost trying to replicate the little girl. Um, of course, the girl has much more redness in her cheeks and she seems really happy as compared to the doll. She is lying in a bed with a pink colored theme with white dots on it. In fact, her pillow, her bed sheet, and even the quilt she is lying in all have the same theme to them. It seems like she is really happy to be in bed and she is going to sleep in a couple of minutes, hopefully after this photo was taken. So you see over here, I finished five seconds early, hopefully, and you can actually do that. It's completely okay. You don't have to get cut off. In fact, if you do get cut off, that's also fine, but again, this was a pretty great example of how you should be describing a photo. Again, because I saw this photo for the first time, it was simply not easy um, producing an answer like that. And at the same point of time, when you really think about it, you can run out of things to say if you don't really do this well. So make sure to get some practice on this photograph again. And uh, now we'll move on to the next one. So this is the next photo right here and we are going to get right into it. The image here features a young girl of Asian descent and she seems to be working on her university assignment. She is sitting down on a bench and working on her MacBook. And uh, from the kind of clothing she is wearing, she basically has layers of clothing with a jacket on with, with a really huge fur around her neck. So it seems like it is winter time. And at the same time, if you think about it, the trees in the background also go 
to prove the same because there are very few leaves on those trees. The other thing you can see is there is the actual university itself in the background and it seems like she is a student at that university. Uh, from my assumption, she seems to be working on either an assignment or taking an online test for the university in itself and she seems really serious about it. Right, so as you can see, almost eight to nine seconds early, I finished in this case and I've started as soon as the timer went off. Of course, you can take that time to prepare if you're not used to this, but you know, given that I've done this a couple of times, I generally don't really need a lot of preparation and I can do that. But in general, since you're not allowed to use a pen and paper in the Duolingo, you can really just create a mind map. For me, I just went through the foreground first to the background and I put in a little bit of assumptions in between and towards the end. This is the third photo over here, guys, and we're gonna go over this as well now. We're gonna start the timer and get, get right into it. In this photo, it seems like the students are sitting in a classroom and are taking a test they are really serious about. The photo features four students over here. Uh, the third one's face is actually hidden because of the second one who is basically in front of it from this point of view. However, all of them seem to be really serious about taking the test. The first one is probably reading a question while the others are writing answers. The last one seems to be really, really into this test and it seems like he has been studying all night and he has a lot of stuff to write in the limited time he has, so he is really into it. The photo also features a presentation room in the background which seems to be separated um, by the foreground via a glass wall and it seems like people in the other room that is towards the background are currently watching a presentation while the students in the foreground are taking the test. So you saw over here also I finished about six, seven seconds early. It's always a good point to finish early so that you don't get cut off. However, if you do, don't worry about it and move on to the next question. It can affect you psychologically a lot in the beginning and I don't want that to happen for the first time on the test day. So just in case it does, you really have to put it together and understand that whatever you do next on the next question is affecting your score even further. So try and forget about it even if you got cut off. So this was my overview of the picture description question type. Now we'll move on to the independent speaking question types. I'm gonna be giving you some tips to begin with. Now again, these would apply to both the written or the oral prompt. So I'm gonna be combining those over here. The first tip for you guys is to really go ahead and plan. You're given some preparation time most of the times in these questions and you have to generally work through a plan for the first five to 10 seconds at least, I suppose. It's probably the best thing if you can just put that into planning. Again, you do not have a pen and paper but you have to build a mind map of what you're going to do. You will always have some questions either on the screen or you would have heard them. So it's always better to understand what you have to do and how you have to answer them. So keeping those questions in mind and connecting them to one another really is the right way to proceed. In these questions, generally you will have a 90 second timer. However, you will be mandated to speak for at least 30 seconds. So what I propose is try to speak as much as possible. If you can speak for 75, 80 seconds, that's even better, right? Like I said, even in the last question you saw me speak, I was only leaving about five to 10 seconds, no more than that. And in this case, I would request you to do the same so that you can boost your score as much as possible. Point number two, as simple as it may sound, it is to focus on the prompt. The prompt will have some questions for you and you really need to put in the focus and answer those questions. Do not miss out on even a single question because you would be losing points for that. And at the same point of time, don't go talking about other things or basically answering the questions in so much detail that you're not able to fit in all the answers in those 90 seconds. It's very important that you practice to understand that. Point number three is to avoid filler words as much as possible. Like I said previously also, I would be putting this point in, but it is for your good scores only. So hopefully you do not get annoyed by that, but try avoiding words like, um, uh, as you saw in my examples also, I was avoiding them. I would pause a little bit, but you know, I would not go there and say, um, uh, you know, that just reduces your score. Point number four over here, like I mentioned, always speak for at least 75 seconds. It's good practice and it will help you go towards a 150 in that Duolingo speaking section. Point number five is to give examples wherever possible. Of course, do this only if you have the time, but I recommend trying to fit, fit in at least one example so that it would definitely make you feel like you are not just answering the questions robotically, but you have something to say on that matter. By the way, stick around for a bonus tip, but for now, we're gonna go ahead and solve a few questions over here. So right here, we have our first question. We have a 30 second preparation time, and after that, we will have a 90 second 
speaking time, right? So let's just start the timer over here and read the question. Describe your favorite subject in school. Hmm, I'm gonna talk about computer science since that is the background I'm from. Then there is, of course, what is it? Why do you like it, right? Because again, that part is important. Then you have how long you have you studied it, right? I can mention that, okay, I've studied for probably in the last two years before, uh, in high school. And why is it important to me, right? So this is again an important part of the process. Just process these questions and you can just simply have them on the screen during the test. All right, so I wasted my 30 seconds. I was simply talking to the camera, but okay, no problem at all. Let's get right into it. And now I'll just begin with the timer and let's start right off the bat. My favorite subject in school used to be computer science. And I personally like it a lot simply because it brought me closer to computers, to the world of computers, I must say. And that was something that I simply did not have access to before this course. Actually, the reason was that my parents would never really buy me a computer. It was not really because we couldn't afford it, but mostly because they thought that I would waste time playing games all day on it. So I never really had access to the world of computers. And this course actually helped me get that access. So I was really keen about it in the beginning because of that reason. However, in time, I actually started doing a lot on computers. And right now, most of my work happens on computers. And I'm really amazed by the kind of programs we have built. So mostly that is why I like the subject. I've studied it for two years in high school and then four years during my undergraduate, uh, undergraduate degree. It is definitely one of the most important portions of my day and you know even today I'm studying it in some way as I'm working on computers. Again computer science is important to me because it's a huge part of my work. I simply cannot go even a single day without computers. I think probably seven to eight hours a day I am in front of a computer so it is definitely something that I work a lot on and in general this is also what fuels my YouTube channel. So that is why I love the subject of computer science most. As you can see, I quickly wrapped it up towards the end and I also stuttered a little bit if you actually saw. I'm not quite sure I remember which word I started on. Again, don't worry about it. You can actually go ahead and see it, but you know, that's how it worked. By the way, if you would like to practice this, make sure to do that and post your answer down below in the comments so that I can verify it for you, I can check it for you and I'll be able to let you know if there are some mistakes or if there are some ways you can improve that answer. Right, in the next question, again, we're gonna start the timer for 30 seconds and let's just strategize. Again, you guys can actually pause this video and do this for yourself first, but again, I'm assuming you've already done that, so I'll start with the question. Okay, so we have to speak for at least 30 seconds, like I said, but try for 90. And they're asking about a hobby or activity that I enjoy. What is it? How long have you been doing it? I think I'm gonna go with working out because that's something that I'm really enjoying nowadays. And yeah, how long I've done it, I can mention that. What do you do? Uh, who do you do it with? Well, yeah, I have a trainer. I'll, I'll mention about that. And then why is it important to me? I think it's a pretty simple one. Let's go ahead. Let's reset the timer and let's begin. Okay, we are setting it to 90 seconds again. And let's start. A hobby that I really enjoy is working out in the gym. I know it's not really a traditional hobby, but it's actually one of the best parts of my day. And I like to think of it as the activity that I enjoy the most. I've been doing it for about four years and I've seen a lot of change in my body size, in my body type, and I've tried to build exactly what I wanted. I'm still in the process of doing that and I think it's a lifelong process. So I will be continuing to do it for at least the next 20 years or so. But I think that the four years I've done it, they have been really impactful. I personally work out with a trainer now. I used to work out with a friend previously back in college but now that I'm out of college I do have a trainer who helps me achieve the goals that I'm looking for from my workouts and that's why I feel that you know having a trainer is also important anyway regardless I'm currently doing it with a trainer and the reason it is really important to me is because I used to be extremely thin back in college when I started at least and that kind of really got to me that, you know, I was just not able to do a lot of activities or perform well, at least in sports because of that posture. So I have been putting in a lot of time at the gym and I've genuinely seen the results. I've genuinely seen the results of actually putting in the effort. And that's exactly why I feel it is important to me. It's a self-improvement process and I will be doing it probably lifelong. You can see over there, I ended right before the, right before the 
time where uh, I could have spoken more. <laughs> I mean, you know, doing YouTube and everything, I can speak a lot on some topics. And this may not be something you may be used to because, again, not all of you are having a YouTube channel. Not all of you have been, you know, probably working out speeches in college or, you know, doing, doing things like that. But don't be afraid of that. Just practice a lot. Trust me, it can be perfected with practice. And you saw me also. I was stuttering a little bit in between. You know, I was reading the question. I was taking my time. It's completely okay to do that. Just try your best. And this kind of an effort, if you can put in this kind of an answer, you will see that you will have a score well over 150 on the speaking section. We'll do one last one for you over here, guys. And let me actually open that up. Right, so this is it. We're going to spend 30 seconds to really strategize and understand what we're going to be talking about and then we'll move on. You can really pause the video over here, you can do it for yourself and then you can compare your answer to mine. Let's start. Okay, so this is talking about describe an in interesting conversation you had recently. What should we say? Well, we should uh, mention what, what, what was the conversation really about, who we are talking to. Okay, I'll talk, about, I'll talk about a conversation with my friend, who you had the conversation with. Well, I had the conversation with my friend. What was it about? It was about, let's say, a bike accident where the conversation took place uh, okay I can say that and explain why you, why you found it interesting okay cool so I'm gonna start over here I'm gonna put the timer on 90 seconds and let's start one of the most interesting conversations that I had with a friend of mine recently was when we were talking about a bike accident that we were both actually a part of we were basically on top of our bike we were going to his place and Unfortunately, what happened was there was a learner driver and he hit our bike and uh, yeah, that actually caused a lot of damage. Again, we were actually okay. However, this conversation was happening later after two months after the bike accident when my friend was actually at my place for a night stay. The whole reason why I found the conversation interesting is because when we were having, when we were in that situation of the accident in itself, we really had our mind in a different place and it was really hard to think about it from that point of view that we're thinking about it right now you know i mean right now when we when we discuss it it's mostly in a funny sort of a way but at that point of time it was sort of horrific so i i find that quite interesting how we can kind of forget our sorrows or mishaps in the past and we can just focus on you know having a good laugh out of them sometimes and that's majorly why I found it interesting, the whole process of different perspectives and, you know, being able to process things in a different way in different times. Well, I think I find that really, really interesting. All right, so I finished again four seconds, I think four to five seconds before I should have, or the maximum time, right? And trust me, that is good enough. You don't need more than that. Hopefully, I have given you the pointers over here. Unfortunately, I won't be able to give you the answers to the Oral, pl uh, oral plots or you know answers to the prompts which are basically spoken because I could not actually get the questions for that unfortunately at this point of time however if you comment down below I'll do a lot of research and I'll find some questions and either way I'll make a video for you hopefully this video gives you an understanding of what you need to do to get a 150 plus on the Duolingo again some bonus tips for you if your vocabulary is a problem Trust me, that will continue to create a problem on the test day as well. So what I recommend is either go online and find a good word list for you. There's a lot of websites with, you know, words that you can study and you can learn. But my recommendation is whenever you are solving questions on this test, you can actually go ahead and write down the words that you do not know, right? Whenever you come across a word, just write it down and really just make your own dictionary. And I personally love that. I think that if you can do that, that is probably the best way to go about it. Um, that's basically the process of learning the English language in general. You have to have those word meanings. I know it doesn't look good and I know it's a lot of effort, but trust me, when you do put it in, it's generally going to help you a lot. And finally, as I mentioned, these YMGrad applications, you can go ahead, download them for these questions and more. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Again, remember when you confirm your email, you'll get the next steps on how you can get these questions. And uh, hopefully that should be easy enough. I'll be going forward and creating more videos on the reading section and of course all the other sections actually listening. We've already covered TOEFL and ALS over here on this channel and I quickly wanted to cover Duolingo for you guys because I think that it's something that you guys have been asking me for a long time about and I think it's <laughs> it's time I do my research and give you those videos. So all of these four videos will come on first and then after that we'll have a whole 
prep schedule, you know, a 15 to 20 day prep schedule where you can actually go ahead and do a lot of practice and study this by yourself without any coachings, without any tuition, all for free. Hopefully this should be helpful enough. If you like the video, please consider subscribing to the channel because it helps me make more videos like this. A lot of research went into this and I'm really proud of being able to create this video for you guys. I'll see you in the next one. Hopefully, goodbye and take care for now. Bye.